Live Trance and Prosper. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian David Phillips, and today we're going to talk about the grass eaters and the gas drinkers. Grass eaters? Gas drinkers? What are you talking about, Brian? Well, as many of you know, I have a very keen interest in comparative religion, particularly in how trance is utilized to connect with the divine. Now, I'd like to thank a friend of mine for tagging me in a heads up. Jeff Stash tagged me on Facebook at a heads up uh, regarding a video in which he said he wanted to share this uh, video with his friends uh, involved with hypnosis, calling it theatrical hypnosis. Okay. Now, the video that he posted was essentially um, that's. Uh, a video of a pastor in South Africa, Pastor Lisago Daniel, uh, who essentially what he did was he told his followers to eat grass. Now they were in the ecstatic state, they felt like the Lord was touching them, and he said that uh, God has a gift for you. And I'll have a link to the video, so you can check that video out. Um, but um, God has a gift for you. Before we go have a break and we, we eat some food, God has prepared manna for you, heavenly food. And he sent the crowd out onto a field, uh, a, little, a little place, a grassy area, and told them to eat the grass, uh, to which many of them did. Most of them did. A lot of them did, and some of them made it really fast. He says, you got to eat fast, got to eat fast. So they're picking up big clumps of grass, shoving it in their mouths. Now, Jeff, in his comments, he said that, oh, they're going to feel that. Um, the, the pastor may not feel it, but the people who ate the grass certainly are. They're going to feel something after they've had that grass, uh, and they certainly are uh, now. Of course, as some people noted, um, cows eat grass, and uh, medieval studies have shown that uh, medieval peasants ate grass. But the thing is, uh, cows need two stomachs to digest grass. Medieval patient, pe peasants probably cooked it uh, and had it with other things. Uh, they at least boiled it. Uh, and so uh, it really can cause extreme stomach discomfort and some other things. Now, um, Pastor Lisego Daniel, he's done the grass thing a few times, um, but he's also taken things even further when he did his version of water to wine, when he took some gasoline and asked congregants to uh, drink it. Uh, as he claimed, he had changed the gasoline to pineapple juice. Now, hopefully, and I, and I have a video over there, uh, hopefully he uh, really did switch it out, that he, instead of giving them gasoline to drink, and in the video you can see them drinking the gas, uh, hopefully he, he gave them pineapple juice. Um, but he may not have. He may be foolish enough to be telling people to drink gasoline. If he's relying primarily upon sleight of hand or suggestion, that's one thing. Now, the South African government, uh, the media board, told the church uh, they had to put an age-appropriate warning label on the gasoline video because they didn't want kids watching it and drinking gas. Well, I wouldn't want adults watching it and then running out and drinking gasoline. Uh, kids, adults, don't try this at home. Even most Catholics don't believe that transubstantiation is more than a metaphor. Now, experiential and ecstatic trance is very powerful and can be oh so wonderful in connecting to the divine or the higher self. However, this is more stagecraft and manipulation than spirituality. There are appropriate and honest ways to practice religion and to experience spiritual bliss and connection with the divine, the ecstatic states. This ain't one of them, folks. 
The gasoline chaser is incredibly dangerous and incredibly, in my opinion, offensive. Now, there are a number of preachers right now uh, in South Africa, in Africa, actually, just the African Pentecostal churches specifically, uh, who are hitting the meme hard on changing water to wine or feeding those who don't have food. Um, they're really hitting it hard. And I suspect Lesego Daniel is trying to one-up folks who are feeding the masses with spirit food uh, by having his followers eating and drinking things they really shouldn't be eating and drinking. Okay? Some of the folks in the extreme Pentecostal side of things claim that true believers should be able to replicate all of the miracles of Christ, even raising from the dead and not just the signs of the Spirit traditionally accepted by Pentecostal churches. And this is at a time when many Pentecostals in the U.S., uh, in the United States, in Canada, have stopped demonstrating public glossalia, or speaking in tongues and the other attributes of the Spirit. However, the full-on Pentecostal churches are the ones that are growing fastest in Asia, South America, and Africa. Pentecostalism is actually the fastest growing religion out there. Um, sorry, Freya. Uh, and so it's worth noting that. Now, when we say this is a form of hypnosis, it's important to realize that formal hypnosis, okay, I've, I was asked about this. Some folks said, how could they do that? Well, in formal hypnosis, we typically deal with something called the hidden observer effect, which uh, essentially protects against uh, ethical issues or missteps by hypnotists. However, keep in mind that uh, what we see in the Lasego Daniel videos, uh, that's a form of ecstatic trance or ecstatic hypnosis within religious context. If your religious beliefs allow for a deity that can change water into wine, or gasoline into pineapple juice, then you may very well accept the suggestions and experience state change. Note, these folks are consenting to the state and happily accepting the reality that their divinity is acting upon them. It's a form of ecstatic state that is directed by the pastor. Although, and I say this frankly, and usually I don't criticize folks in my video, he's being rather creepy in his mannerism and tendency to giggle at his followers. Uh, Captain Uber disrespectful that he is. Now, I may be misinterpreting what he's saying. Certainly some folks say that he's, he's not uh, being disrespectful. He's just laughing because he's in the spirit. Uh, okay, if you say so, um, but it is kind of, comes off as a little creepy. I know sometimes I come off as creepy to some folks too, so I can't read a lot into that, but I can read that he's being disrespectful and that um, uh, he's asking folks to do things he really shouldn't be doing. Now, if you believe me as a hypnotist or as a pastor or as whomever, um, when I give you weird suggestions uh, in my stage hypnosis show, I do a lot of weird stuff. Okay, I'm giving, if you believe the weird suggestions that I give you in whatever context are good for you, then you may very well take the suggestions even if it's not something you would normally do outside of the trance state. Okay? That's how stage hypnosis works. That's how some religious suggestion works. That's how hypnosis works. We bypass that critical factor and we start doing some interesting things. So 
it's not unusual for someone to be able to do something in an ecstatic state, in a religiously contextual state, that they wouldn't normally do. Most of these folks wouldn't normally go chow down on grass or drink gasoline. I certainly hope not. Otherwise, their life expectancy is very, very low. But it is important to note that. Now, one can also use religious context, social influence, and prestige to leverage suggestion effectiveness. Okay. Uh, the pastor in these particular videos has a lot of prestige, and they do believe that he is, in fact, speaking for God. And if that's a real belief you have, I mean a visceral belief, not an intellectual one, but one you feel in your bones, you're much more likely to accept the suggestions and go for it. Okay? Now, peasants may have eaten grass, but probably they did something with it, and they're going to have some issues later. They may feel wonderful at the time of the preaching, but those folks are in for some uncomfortable stomach issues. Not to mention the parasites, pesticides, or other things that may be on that grass. Uh, wash your vegetables before you eat them, folks. Okay. Now, prestige suggestion is a term that's used to describe suggestions that are reinforced in part by the prestige or power or perceived prestige and power of the operator, of the person giving the suggestions. In this respect, it's very similar to what Robert Cialdini refers to as the influence principle of power or authority. But there are nuances at work to it as well. Yes, it's scary when it's abused, uh, but no hypnosis is required for simple authority. However, if we have authority, we leverage our hypnotic effectiveness. Now, the videos we've seen here uh, in the Lusego um, Daniel videos, um, they're definitely not just someone that's so happy because they're at an event. They're in an ecstatic state. They're in an ecstatic trance. A state of ecstasy within a guided trance state. It's an extension of the same sort of trance state that faith healers typically guide their clients into. In many respects, it's identical to hypnosis, although the practitioners would object to such a characterization as they would claim it is a divine experience. Okay? Rather than a psychological experience, they claim divinity involvement. Now, one doesn't preclude the other. You can have a divine experience that's based on a suggestion. However, that's problematic for those folks. It's not problematic for me. I'm happy to accept lots of things and to play with all sorts of things. However, a trained hypnotist who watches folks like uh, Lesego Daniel can clearly see underlying hypnotic operators to his operation and to what he's doing. There are folks who would equate all of this with hypnosis. Personally, I believe uh, if we call everything hypnosis, we dilute the term and it's difficult to see where we uh, can communicate about things. It becomes an issue. Now, the body shaking is obviously, that we see in the videos, obviously that's a form of ecstatic trance. I do not at any time believe any of these folks are aping or pretending, uh, at least the ones who are drinking the gasoline, the ones who are eating the grass, they're in genuine ecstatic states. Um, keep in mind that in a religious setting such as this, the critical factor of the conscious mind is already suppressed. Faith. Folks are told to have blind faith, um, and at least these folks do, or seem to. 
This is why our, um, the Texas Republican Party at one time actually had a party plank. Their platform actually had a point to uh, eliminate the teaching of critical thinking in high schools in Texas because they thought that uh, critical thinking damaged people's religious beliefs. Well, critical thinking and faith don't always go together. They don't have to be exclusionary, um, but certainly if I were to question a suggestion that, wait a minute, this dad looks, does, doesn't look like pineapple juice anymore. Uh, that looks like gasoline. I, I, how, did you, how would you do that? Uh, that can damage the effectiveness of those sort of suggestions. Of course, um, the people who see critical thinking as a threat to their religious beliefs uh, they need to rethink their religious beliefs and certainly they need to rethink their faith because if my critical thinking uh, damages your faith then you really need to analyze what the hell do you believe in that it doesn't stand up to analysis you're a silly person now in the videos the participants are most definitely in trance um, but not all trances are the same not all trance is hypnosis. Hypnosis isn't all trance. But I do say that uh, these videos are a little bit too much, even for me. I'm generally accepting of other people's actions and beliefs in a religious context, but I, I'm not accepting of what uh, Pastor Lisego Daniel is doing in these videos. Uh, I do think it's going a little overboard and he is endangering his participants. If he's not endangering them, then he's cheating them. And that's even worse. No, they're both pretty bad. Okay? I hope you've enjoyed this video. Today was a rant, I know. On uh, Tuesdays it's news or rant. Today was a rant and some news actually. On Wednesdays I answer your questions. Just ask me a question. I'll tell you no lies. I'll tell you no lies when I'm answering the question. I can't guarantee I won't lie to you in personal life or about other things. But uh, ask me a question. I'll give it a shot. Okay? Thursday's trance time. I guide you through a trance experience. Uh, please click subscribe and like the video. And comment, ask questions if you could. I hope this has been useful or helpful to you. This has been, been an interesting one. Please don't eat grass and don't drink gas. Uh, this is Dr. Brian David Phillips saying, live trance and prosper. Bye-bye.